We're here tonight at Sevastopol together with us is Jake Bell, the pioneer of psychedelic revolution who has been pushing the envelope for a long, long while and speaking in English right here for all nations, for all people of the country, of the continent and of the world. Uh, there is a message from this man. And Jake, what is the message and uh, how can you frame it? Well, let's, let's begin with uh, uh, your question, you know, you're thinking of you want uh, getting out of Babylon, as you put it. Yeah, getting out of Babylon, right? That's is where it possible you, uh, and is it a goal well, for today? Well, Babylon is really a state of mind. And so, you essentially take it with you wherever you go. Yeah. yeah. And essentially getting out of Babylon is two things in my understanding. Um, the first is, we are in a kind of matrix, as we know the film The Matrix, and people are under a lot of pressure now. But everyone on the planet came here for this purpose. They came here for this time to be here in a time called the time of great awakening. It's the time of ascension. So this time of seeming uh, total influence and control of uh, the system is though the time of awakening, you Well, say. it is because everyone here is operating under their own belief systems. And everyone's beliefs are different. And so what you believe, what I believe, or what anyone else believes is their own belief system. And that essentially forms what you might call the illusion. So there are two parts. One is the matrix and the other is the illusion. They are both inter intertwined. Wait, so there's not just the matrix, it's not an illusion as of itself, there's, there's illusion. Well, the illusion being the third dimension. We're all in the third dimension. And so, we all came to this third dimension, and some of us came here as what are called light workers or star seeds. And what I'm basically saying, a lot of it is what I would call an amalgamation of information that comes from many sources. <coughs> many of those sources are channeled information. They are from the fifth or up to the twelfth dimension. Some are from extraterrestrial, that's also existing in higher dimension, most of that is. So you're basing yourself on the ground that the perceived reality is just a narrow specter of, di uh, represents a narrow specter of dimensions, right? And that there's another spectrum going up high and down below where other creatures exist. Well, yes, but we also have our existence on the higher dimensions simultaneously. Uh -huh. So your soul level is already in higher dimensions. Your emotions, from what I understand from very good channeled information, is that your soul level is already in a higher dimension. And your emotions are your guidance to let you know which way your thoughts are flowing in the now. And the now, right now, is where all your power lies. And so, and because it's all vibration, then whatever is influencing the vibration influences your vibration. And there's a saying that goes, one cannot create beyond the boundaries of one's beliefs. One cannot perceive beyond the boundaries of one's belief, beliefs. So what you believe becomes rather critical because we are all creating our own reality. That's the bottom line. We are the creators of our own reality, even if we don't know that we are. How does that happen? How do, how do we consciously create? Or this happens unconsciously? Well, it happens a little of both because we oftentimes are not aware of what we are thinking. Sometimes our thoughts are very uh, subliminal, so to speak. But you can always tell by the way you feel, which way you're flowing your thought. And thought creates reality. That's what is said by many 
great teachers, beginning from the Seth material back from the beginning 1960s up through the 80s. And many very good channel teachers have taught this, and that seems to be the bottom line. We're, uh -huh. We are in what they call a multi-dimensional reality. It's a multi-dimensional universe. And literally, they say that we are literally shifting between probable worlds one billion times per second. Whoa. Okay, so speaking of creation, what do I create when I vibrate on low frequencies of fear, anxiety, doubt? Well, then etc. you begin to shift into the probable world, so to speak, that reflects that back to you. Mm -hmm. So if you fear something and you dwell upon your fear, you actually begin to shift into the reality that eventually manifests in that fear. And so the art or the the science of deliberate creation is essentially to learn how to become more deliberate in the way that you flow your energy or the way that you focus your attention. And in a way simply more light-hearted, no? Like what? Light-hearted. Well, light-hearted is definitely positive and certainly positive emotion is your soul telling you that you're now aligned in harmony with your desire and they say that desire is the basis of all cre that you create or all creation so if you desire something you have an, a vision of something and you can stay in that vision regardless of the reality around you or what we would call the what is the what is of what is now your reality the more that you can let's say visualize or fantasize or evoke a feeling of your desire, the more you are literally beginning to shift into the alignment with attraction or manifestation of that desire. So it's like they say, I got, uh, I got to feel as if I already uh, accomplished my desire, as if my desire was fulfilled. Well, that seems to be one of the tricks. To, uh, to feel it as if it, it already is. And as you do that, synchronistic events start to appear that reflect that reality. In other words, you start to shift into the probable world where that reality is, exists. And you are literally drawing it into your reality. And so, and so that's the way out of ba Babylon, it's essentially, <laughs> you see what I mean, is that you simply are wanting to create what your desire and your dream is, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure it also has to involve just physical creation as well, like physical ac uh, accomplishment of the, of the decisions. Okay, I decide to follow this dream of mine, and I just go on that path feeling happy about already going on that path, right? Well, you're pretty good at it, as I see, that you tend to stay in a place where you can stay pretty buoyant, meaning you can stay pretty uplifted and you tend to know, you tend to have a feeling when things are kind of not going the way you, you feel right, you tend to like shift over to someplace else where you feel a little bit better, right? <laughs> so that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you're very good at doing it. You just need to become a little more conscious of it, as we all do, that's all. Tune in, turn on, drop out. <laughs> you know that saying? Tune Originally that was it, right? Yeah. Tune in, well, you could say tune in, tap in, and uplift. Meaning, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, essentially, um, there is a state of what we call full consciousness. There is a state of awakening. They speak about it as ascension. Well, what is ascension? Well, essentially, we are hardwired physically. We are hardwired to be able to wake up out of the third dimension and into what we might call fifth dimension. And that state is a state of love that is profound. It is vast, and it, it is a connection to your God-Self. 
And I know from my own personal experience, at least in one day of my life, when I, find, when I did wake up fully, that state exists and it's real. And it is the destiny of everyone. It is an inevitable that we are waking up. We will wake up. And so many of the problems we have and so many of the frustrations or loss of hope or despondency or powerlessness that we feel is simply because we are at some vibrational level yeah. farther away from that. Yeah. Yeah, you're very positivist, or like positive, optimistic about this, and this is truly what's amazing about you. And uh, what uh, what do you see as a, as the evolution of uh, of our planet, or even of these countries, you know, in in the near perspective? Well, as we know, here in Ukraine, Russia, it's now a flashpoint. You might say um, there's a lot of confrontation a lot of violence and yeah. of course the what would, would be referred to as the cabal or Babylon yeah. <laughs> or whatever you want to say is essentially doing whatever it can to create pandemonium and war and and literally to stop us from waking up they yeah. would like to make it impossible for us to wake up but it's not possible and it's not it's being made not possible with the help of higher dimensional awakened enlightened beings whether they are extraterrestrial or soul level or ascended masters these these realities are very real and many people don't know that for most people they wonder well is there a god they don't know for sure many think there's not many would say well is there a heaven is there life after death many don't know Many don't know they're creators of their own reality, so they just create by default, as they say. We all do this. I'm, in no, I'm no different than anybody else. I'm not any more like enlightened or evolved than, than anyone else, really. But I wanted to know, what is my purpose here? Who am I? What, am I, what is my purpose here? Where am I going? So for me, I started at an early age pushing those questions and I was very fortunate you might say blessed at one time in my life where I actually did wake up I woke up into a state of absolute full consciousness and so from that experience since it's so vast vastly different and vastly expansive in a state of love which you could compare only by feeling and perception that state of feeling is like all the oceans and rivers and atmospheres in the world compared to what I might be feeling right now not to belittle what I feel right now but by comparison what I feel right now in terms of love would be a glass full so yeah. to go from a glass full of feeling to all the oceans and river, rivers and atmospheres in the world is a huge step so I see a sense of a thread of a unity with the whole the entire universe in what you're describing as that state. So that presupposes this realization of a unity v with everyone else, doesn't it? it? Yes, absolutely. In fact, it, we even are led to believe now or told that by very enlightened teachers and some extraterrestrial that what we perceive as our external reality is not actually external it's actually internal internal which is yes. very, how do you how do you fi figure this out you see it i couldn't you my know, senses don't tell me this you, you know see? you know i just recently read uh, a book by david david Icke, and mm -hmm. he has that picture in there showing like a man a uh, conscience as a huge global creature you know and inside his head is our entire world it's mm -hmm. like if we unite enough we can become like a se separate cells of a whole organism you know and that consciousness is the consciousness of our united organism of all human human consciousness well I think that that's what it's leading up to as they say all is one which is kind of a cliche but in some very profound way that's true and more and more now people are waking up and that's what this time is all about because the earth is demanding it and the, and the earth is changing now 
and our bodies are changing. And as of the 2012 end of the Mayan calendar, that was the crossover point where the bondage that we've been in, the enslavement and the bondage to the, the rule of the kings of darkness, so to speak, which we've all been enslaved by and, and in bondage to for, according to some, 13,000 years, that time is now coming to a close. And the forces that have held rule over the planet which are apparently also connected to high, higher, uh, well, I won't say higher, I will say other dimensional extraterrestrials, which are influencing the physical people here on the planet also, are also collapsing. And in a sense, all, 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 the, all the etheric fields and planes are being cleared. And I would say that whether, you know, everyone has sort of a different pers perspective on this. There are different sources of information that tell of our history, right? The history of humanity is immense. And it's nothing close to what we've been told even. It goes back millions of years even. And we've been, uh, in, a, in a, even our solar system, there have been space wars that have taken place. And these space wars have devastated the planets and even Earth, and, and apparently even Earth has been in quarantine for some say 300,000 years. Some extra, extraterrestrials say it's been like a broken record that keeps hitting this loop. And so some say, well, why have we chosen this? Why has it happened? Well, partly from my understanding from very good channels such as John Smallman, Saul Information, which is current channeling, goes into the depth and the extent of what really happened and it seems that it's two things from my understanding. One is we chose to run away from God so to speak. We chose to see what would it be like if we were separated from our natural state of being, unconditional divine love, and we separated ourselves and imagined what it like, would be like to be independent and more or less running away from mom and dad and running away from home. And yeah. we did this, this experiment, and we essentially got trapped in time. And time itself is an illusion. Yeah. So we're trapped in this time zone, life after life, and we have all these experiences. But in all of that, we are now ready to go back home, to wake up. Uh -huh. And to re sort of retake our resources, our original resources yes. right, that we've possessed, which are quite supernatural if you didn't have those resources you wouldn't be here you always have it you're you're connected to it always so the point is to realize that you always had it right is that you have it right now is yes you, you couldn't just don't be realize you, you couldn't be here right if you didn't have it right now and the thing is it's just a matter of we've forgotten literally we've forgotten this state of awakening this state of divine love we for, we have literally pretended it out of existence and so we don't allow ourselves to actually experience it but at the same time we're always connected to it and on the multi-dimensional level our soul is there we are connected to other probable realities probable versions of ourself existing in other future dimensions where we are awake and actually, all time is simultaneously because we actually exist in timelessness. So we are in eternity. And in eternity, the future is now. The past is now. Yes, yes, absolutely. Could you also speak on the, so to speak, first, uh, first key in overcoming your fear, about overcoming fear? Well, the, the, the best that I can see is that it's not something you can really uh, push away because the more you push away, the more you add power to it. In a sense, you have to make it sort of your friend, as I see it, because any negative emotion, no matter what you call it, there are, let's say there's a different spectrum. Let's say that the bottom lowest vibration is depression, yeah. powerlessness, right? And then up, then you know, it might go up to fear, it might go up, eventually it goes up to, let's say, anger. 
and in anger you're starting to get your power back because you're now trying to like fight your way out of this powerlessness but as you focus your thought instead of on what you fear by contrast well what is it that you fear okay that's what it is by contrast what would you want what would you desire well I would want this and what is that well speak about it and some say just align yourself by speaking about what you want and why you want it and as you do you can feel your emotion shift if your emotion goes up because now you are, are getting back in alignment with your soul level your inner guidance yeah understand and as yeah. you do that you begin to shift probable worlds and so eventually the more you do it the more you do you practice to, you actually begin to like change the reality so when you're in a state of fear the thing is just to relax relax with it let go of it as best you can focus on what you want and go go with it spend time to let it sort of like pass through you and the more that you can just sort of go go deeper and I think that meditation is probably a very good thing to quiet your mind because when you have no thought at least you are not in a state of vibrating where those negative thoughts are taking you and so you can practice in meditation is very good thing and certainly they as the saying goes the kingdom of heaven is within and yes the state of divine love comes from within yes. it's all there it's just that we're like we've disconnected from it we've essentially made like a bubble around us yeah so it's a journey within it's a journey within but it doesn't mean that it that it's not also without but as we know the without is also within so yeah. <laughs> right on. it's very uh, Ironic, though. Ironic, yes. So... <clears throat> yeah, well, that's, that's amazing, truly, uh, how simple also it can become for someone who's just uh, determined to, to do, to follow the positive emotion, because mm -hmm. it's uh, like a joyful way. Yeah. Well, one, the, one of the p points of doing the video, you know, here today, is just because uh, I hear so many things said on the internet there's many very good sources of information that could be the uh, sources of information coming from uh, galactic for example and they're saying that yes we are in this point right now where the this darkness that we've been in that the enslavement in the matrix is diminishing it's falling down and we are on the cusp so to speak the threshold of being liberated literally we're not going to be under this awful intimidation that we have been in for a very long time and all of this surveillance that goes on all of these wars going on it's all part of just this this eruption of energy that everyone is going through on the planet but the planet is itself is preparing and actually is almost like splitting like a hologram and those yeah. who are choosing to go into the ascension, our, our bodies are already changing. DNA is already changing. Our, we're going from, apparently, from carbon-based bodies to crystalline-based. Um, literally, the soul level is like, it's like w working on our bodies, so to speak. It's like preparing us, literally, in our metabolism, in our physical bodies, in our cellular structure, in, in our pineal glands, in our uh, DNA, everything is being like uh, calibrated and prepared to go up and to go back into this awakening. And, and when? How can we say when? Because time's an illusion. But I, I love the, the idea that, that when you wake up, it's as if everything you lived was just a dream and you're not even sure if it really even happened <laughs> that just blows me away the thought of that being the yes. way that it is you see because it's very much like that if you if you recall any time that you had a bad dream and you're in the middle of this dream and you're so convinced this bad dream was real and then all of a sudden you wake up and you're just like well wait a minute oh wow that's, that's, that's 
That's great. That's I'm great. not really I'm in that dream. I'm really here. That really didn't happen. I'm over here. I'm away.